Welcome to Cosplay Stitch and Seam. I'm Pennant. And I'm V-Fire. We're so excited to see you guys, well, talk to you guys again. Um, just a few announcements before we get started. Um, we got some upcoming conventions. Uh, you probably will be hearing this episode post-Wizarding Days, so we'll just say we had a wonderful time at Wizarding Days. It was so much fun! <laughs> You'll never believe who wins the contest. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I I don't know either. (laughs) But it was amazing. But it was amazing. And there were so many really cool costumes. Um, I've also got uh, SakuraCon coming up in... uh, It's April. April, I'm not sure. But it's Easter weekend. And uh, how about you, Mercedes? Hi! Let's see. I know Nihon Matsuri will be coming up. And uh, I always love going and attending at that, as well as uh, Gaming Con. I usually go and just attend at that one, and uh, my brother likes to compete in the contest, so I'll be going and rooting for him, and I think his friend's competing with him this year. It'll be cute. Great, great. Um, Then we've also, of course, got, if you guys want to send us your ideas for episodes, your cosplay horror stories, or your uplifting and inspiring stories that have... Uh, I guess you've experienced through cosplay. You can send those to us at our email, which is cosplay stitch and ste- stitch and seam at <laughs> gmail.com. Wow, I'm like bleh, today. <laughs> cosplay stitch and seam at gmail.com. Yes, or go to the website cosplay stitch and seam dot com, and you can fill out the contact form there and tell us hello. Or you can check out our Facebook group, which is what 400 members strong now. Yeah, oh, it's over, crazy. Over 400. Over 400. It's, it's getting closer and closer to that 500 mark, and it yeah. makes me, like, so excited. <laughs> yeah. Go there, hang out. There's a really supportive and uh, really clever group with lots of great ideas if you're stuck on a project and things like that. They're awesome and friendly, and we love them. Yes. Oh, and it's Work in Progress Wednesday. I mean, not when this thing is posting, <laughs> but I'm posting it right now in the group. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Whoops. All right. I've had so, a busy day. It's Okay. So without further ado, we wanted to get to our topic today. Um, You guys may have seen some uh, hashtags trending on Twitter lately. One of the big ones is 29 Days of Black Cosplay. So we wanted to invite some inspiring and amazing black cosplayers on our podcast today. First, we have Prince Kamui Cosplay. Welcome. Hi. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started, what you like to work on? I got started... Oh god, this is gonna make me sound old. <laughs> in the That's okay, we're old too. Grade. Yeah! Oh, we're oh. all old here. I got started in the fifth grade when my mom told me we couldn't afford a Halloween costume. Oh. So oh. I went into my closet while I was watching Inuyasha, of course, and put together an Ash Ketchum costume oh for my school. Gosh. Oh! That's amazing. Oh. And. At the time, I was really obsessed with Digimon, but he didn't fit my costume, so I made him a Pikachu mask and put it over his face. Aww. That's so cute. That's awesome. So if people wanted to follow you, Prince Kamui, where could they do so? Um, I do have a Facebook and a Twitter under Prince Kamui Cosplay, and then I also do um, singing. I do anime covers and whatnot on YouTube under Subaru Kamui. That's awesome. Oh, whoa. And you've been in a lot of, like... um, kind of like the idol project sort of events, right? Yeah, I did ALA, ALA Idol in 2016. I think it was the first one, and I won first place in that. And then I do the Otaku Dreams Maid Cafe. They asked me to come in as a singer. Oh, and I'm excited great. that this year they're actually going to have me as a singer for halftime at Bonsai. <gasps> oh, that's awesome. Congrats. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome to the show. Our second guest is Black Betty Cosplay. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. Um, so I also got started a long time ago. Um, I didn't know, I didn't call it cosplay, it was just costuming. Because um, I just made various costumes. Like I was a wizard once, stuff like that. I like to sew. <laughs> um, and then I did a lot of theater. So that was kind of my main entry into like costume making. And I didn't really officially cosplay until, like, Harry Potter happened. And then I was like, I need to make wizard robes and Quidditch robes. So that was kind of my first, like, real cosplay. That's awesome. a long time ago, like, in high school. I don't know. (laughs) Harry Potter, the gateway cosplay drug. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. 
I mean, I wore like Dragon Ball, like full on <laughs> Dragon Ball outfit in high school because I was a giant nice. wave. So <laughs> I was Eowyn and it was amazing yeah. from Lord of the Rings. Well, Heck like yes. High class, pretty <laughs> nerdy. Mine was like a bright orange <laughs> gee for superhero day at school. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, got a little off track. Um, so, Black Betty, tell us um, what your specialties are and a little bit about like where we can follow you. Uh, so, a lot of my work is sewing um, and some prop construction and then re- wig work. So, curling, styling, uh, building wigs from scratch is kind of like a recent thing I've been doing. Ooh, um, nice. I also do photography and uh, love doing like photo shoots. And um, I am on Instagram and Facebook as Black Betty Cosplay. Uh, there's an S in the Instagram one because someone else has the original one. Um, and then on Twitter, I am B Betty underscore Cosplay. Um, and then I just started on TikTok, which is also Black Betty Cosplay. That's awesome. I did. I noticed on on your Twitter because I'm a little bit pro Mara obsessed that you had yeah. an amazing Gala wig. So, <laughs> yay! <laughs> Prepare for life. <laughs> yes, that's so cute. Oh, anyway. Uh, so welcome, Black Betty. Um, so we just awesome. wanted to ask you guys a little bit about yourselves, about why the hashtag um, Black Cosplayer here, hashtag 29 Days of Black Cosplay are so important, um, things like that. Um, so we're probably going to just jump back and forth between you two as we go through uh, these questions. So I'm going to go ahead and start again with uh, Prince Kamui cosplay. Um, tell us, what was the hardest part about starting cosplay for you? Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't actually know, because usually if I'm just like, that costume looks cool, I go out and get stuff for it, and then I just do it. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so you mentioned that like you you started with like Inuyasha and stuff. Like, did you have like local cosplay groups, cosplay gatherings, any events and things that that you were able to get into, or how did you get into the convention scene from there? Um, someone had told me about Anime Vegas when I started high school. Oh, nice! So I, I was like, cool, that sounds fun. And then I was like, hey, cousin, you wanna go with me? We can make costumes and go because we didn't think that cosplay was an actual thing so we went there and we saw the line of people in costumes we were like huh our people (laughs) that's awesome i found my people (laughs) um how about you betty how how was it getting started for you with cosplay or like when did you find out what cosplay was and kind of evolve into that i think the like the first time was like just i moved to san francisco after college and like wonder con was a big thing and um some friends who are my roommate and their friends were like let's go check out this con and I was like okay I mean I have my Harry Potter (laughs) robes I guess I'll wear those and then it was like you showed up and you're like oh my god (laughs) so much I was like okay I need to do a lot more um wow (laughs) so yeah it was it was amazing (laughs) that is awesome um so sorry if this is a little bit of more of a personal question but have you guys ever Mm -hmm. felt limited in the characters that you're able to choose and has that changed since when you started um, did you want to go first, Kamui? Oh, um, when I first started, not not particularly. I'm kind of an airhead, so not particularly because <laughs> that's good. I, I was just like, that guy looks cool, yeah. But the only thing that probably held me back was um, like self esteem with cosplaying female characters. So I used mm. to stick to just male characters. Dude, I feel that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, how about you, Betty? Um, I think when I first started, I kind of was like, I'll do whatever I want. But um, I do remember when I started to look at more anime characters, like back when I was doing it, there was kind of like this list. And I remember there was like a chat room and people were like, these are kind of the characters that black characters get to do. Like this list of anime characters. And that was it. And I was like, oh, dang, pretty short, you guys. (laughs) There's like only so many black anime characters. And so I was like, wow, okay. Okay, if that's all I got, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I actually, I think I actually kind of quit for a little bit after that because I was like, oh, that was weird. Yeah, that could um, be really discouraging. Yeah, it was. It was like it was way too many people saying that was kind of like the plan, and I was like, I don't, I didn't think that was what we had to do. <laughs> I thought you could do whatever you wanted. Mm-hmm. So, do you um, feel like that's changed more today, or does that still feel like there's like 
that exists in one form or another. I think it's changed a lot more. I mean, I still see the lists go around, but it's not like it's not like you have to stick to this. It's more like, look at these characters that exist. Yay, it's awesome. Oh, um, that's much better. And yeah. so that's good. That's a way better way to go about it, you know, instead of like, here's just these five characters. You can only do these five characters. Otherwise, get out. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's and less more... gatekeepy feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's way more like, hey, here's some options. If you were looking for this type of character, here's a cool character to check out. I've seen a lot of those. And then more people are just like, yeah, oh, I think you would be great as this character. And it looks nothing like you. And they're just like, oh, you love these colors. You like these yeah. colors. You should do this co- character. That's, That's cool. Awesome. So it's it's gotten better a lot. A good. Lot better. That's good. Um, so we noticed, of course, because uh, Twitter is trending with uh, hashtags like 29 days of black cosplay and hashtag bl- black cosplayer here was one of the older ones. Um, why do you guys feel like those tags are so important? Uh, Kamui? I think it's, it's, it's because, you know, there are, there are black, there are black nerds and there are black characters, there are black people who cosplay and a lot of people, I think for a long time, the, the black nerd community figured that they weren't very welcome, but, Mm -hmm. and especially with anime conventions, not really having an array of cosplayers of color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is always a big problem, especially like in the in the West, like versus. Well, do I know my hemisphere? Like back here in Vegas or in Utah, there's like really no cosplayers of color versus like going maybe to like Florida or mm-hmm. yeah, Georgia further east. or something like that. And okay. and I think a lot of people, a lot of people who run conventions think that well, they're not. What's the word? They're not an essential need for the convention scene, but they don't realize that that's really discour- discouraging for younger mm-hmm. cosplayers who are of color. So it's it's all comes down to representation, especially since we now have all these newer, younger cosplayers coming into the scene. We don't want younger black cosplayers thinking, well, I never see anybody with my skin tone, so maybe it's just not for me. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, it yeah. totally does. Um, how about you, Betty? Um, yeah, I feel the same way. I think, like, g- looking at back then and then, like, the whole movement as it happened, like, it w- made a huge deal, especially in areas where it's not as diverse, or at least in the con scene it's not diverse, because I actually know a bunch of people, but they're, they were nervous or scared, or they'll just attend, like, not in cosplay because they're really worried about it. And I know, like after seeing it they were like oh my god i can i can do a cosplay too and i noticed like more cons at least in the pacific northwest having larger and larger attendees like black attendees were like before you would see some but not a lot and it's like skyrocketed and that like that's awesome just like rappers being like i love this anime making a huge difference cuz like <laughs> i remember being on like a train, um, we were heading to one of the cons and we were in cosplay and uh, there were a couple of like, like some black ladies like in the, on the subway with us and they were like, they're like, uh, where are you guys going? You're going to a con? And we were like, yeah. And they're like, oh my God, I'll tell my nephew he loves XYZ anime. Like Aww. he should go check it out. And I was like, that is a very different response from what I remember. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. That's really so cute. It's definitely changed like a lot. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, so this is also for both of you. Uh, what are some of the reactions you've noticed while you've participated in that hashtag this month? Um, Kamui? It's mostly, it's mostly it's been good. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people are just resharing and retweeting. And I have one friend who's like, if this is the only month you're retweeting, then get out. Like, mm-hmm. it's something that sh- shouldn't be... It's something that shouldn't be only done in February. It's something mm-hmm. that should be done year-round. But it seems to happen more in February, which is a little bit discouraging. But it's gotten so much more attention since it first started that that you realize how important it really, really is. Especially since all the cosplayers that are being shared are some of the cosplayers you probably have never seen. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Like, um, I've been really excited because I've seen so many getting shared on my feed. And I've seen so many people that I've never seen before and so many amazing costumes I've never seen that it, it's been really fun to get to, like, explore and follow new people. Um, gosh, what was I going to say? I noticed um, 
blah, blah, blah. I totally lost my train of thought. Did you have a question? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was going to say, I uh, could uh, Black Betty answer next. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. No. you didn't <laughs> okay. go back. I skipped. <laughs> uh, Betty, uh, what, um, what has the reaction uh, been for you on Twitter and on your other social media? A lot of the same stuff, just people finding new cosplayers to follow if they hadn't already. Um, people just being like, I should do it because they're like excited to see all these other people and being like, you know what, I'm going to do a cosplay this year. Um, so just generally people being very happy about it, but also like being like, hey, also post people outside of this time of the year because right. that tends to be the, the thing and it's so disappointing. <laughs> yeah, so. I think that's like a... Um like a really good point to bring up because like it started like with the f with february and all the awareness kind of things mm -hmm. but it's like let's take the next step and let's normalize this let's make exactly. it exactly a you know when you go to share something don't just default to your uh you know your like recognize what you're doing those uh hidden biases and be like hey mm -hmm. how about i try and actively change this not just in february but the whole year mm -hmm. exactly. i i actually i really really love that like more people are trying to push for that that's amazing mm -hmm. nice. and also like it makes some people start asking like con cosplay like events groups sponsors whatever actually ask for some of those people because like sometimes they just love to forget that and then yeah people are actually asking for it that's awesome yes we should all want all these amazing cosplayers come on mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so in the future like what kind of changes do you hope to see within the community so like based like you know, based on that whole, like, okay, let's make it not just February, but all year round. But what are uh, other changes in the community that, like, from the average con goer all the way up to somebody who runs a convention? Like, what do you think that they could do to help create more of this welcoming community? I think it's mostly just the basis of asking. Like, I used to run the Masquerade for Sabacon here in Las Vegas. And one, I think we had our first two of our first black cosplay guests because all I did was reach out and say, hey, we're from mm -hmm. Vegas. We would like to have representation at our con. We would like to have you come. So we had King Kitsy there with, I think it's how you say it, Genevieve, Genevieve Cosplay? Yeah. I recognize that. Had, I think so, yeah. And when we had them, them there, there was so much excitement for them, which I don't think cons actually realize how excited people are to see representation at a con. It, and it doesn't matter if the people who were excited were black or white because we had both, mm -hmm. even like young, you know, I don't want to say white kids because that sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> we had like these young, non color kids. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know the word for it. <laughs> my kids. <But> fine. <laughs> oh my god, I'm dying. <laughs> the point is, they were so excited to see King Kitsu because it doesn't always have to come down to. Also, it doesn't always have to come down to numbers because no matter what, African mm -hmm. American cosplayers are most likely not going to have the numbers that a regular cosplayer would have. Yeah. But just the fact that we give them a chance opens up a door for not only African American cosplayers, but for just cosplayers in general. Yeah. And it's like, they're. There's so much talent that can be easily overlooked if you don't realize that you're mm -hmm. you're doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah, people get excited to see representation. I, I, I really like that. What about you, Black yeah. Betty? Yeah, I think it's just a lot of it's like suggesting people to conventions or people choosing to step up and contact those conventions because just some people don't think they can because they don't have the numbers um, or they don't have the clout. And I know more and more people who are starting to just be like, look, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to contact that sponsor or I'm going to contact this person, that person. Like I know a bunch of people started pushing others to go do the artist sponsorship and a bunch of people applied and got in. Oh, and so awesome. it's just like all those little things where it's like, hey, we can do this. Like everybody just push for it and show that you like these people so that it's like exciting and not all the same people we've seen 80 times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like, create some variety, please. <laughs> I know. Um, <clears throat> so we actually had one of our listeners write in with a question that I thought you guys mm -hmm. would be awesome to get your opinion on. Um, they didn't leave a name. It's anonymous, but I hope I didn't just miss the name, but um, 
If you guys want to chime in with your two cents, they said, Hey, y'all, I love your podcast, and I was wondering if you could give some pointers or cover an episode on how to handle cross-gender, either gender bend or cross-racial cosplay. I know blackface is way wrong, but as a white guy who loves Lucio and Doomfist from Overwatch, how disrespectful would it be to attempt those costumes in my own skin? I guess I'm just worried about being accused of appropriating when all I really want to do is represent my love for them. I know I know that's a hard question because it, it's not like any one person can answer for like all people of certain types. Um, yeah. So, but what are your opinions on that, uh, Prince Kamui? The thing with that is people want to throw those words around so easily. Like, yes, black. Mm-hmm. Don't don't black me. That's like yeah, it's just number number, number one. <laughs> yeah, number one. But it's so easy to not do that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But if you want to just do a character because you love the character in your own skin, I'm all for that. If they have dreads, that's just part of the costume. I don't technically think it's. I don't think it's appropriation just to to show that you love the the, the character by cosplaying them. Mm-hmm. For me, appropriation yeah. is more like you go around day to day with like these janky looking dreads and you want to be talking like you know you're someone from a different race and you're not you know you know what I mean like mm-hmm. if it's for yeah. the love of the character as long as you're not black facing or as long as you're not like it's not like you live day to day with I don't even know if the character has dreads does the character have dreads? Um, I think <laughs> Lucio does, does. Yeah. Maybe, Lucio does? Yeah. yeah yeah Lucio does yeah I mean and there, there are ways around it cause like that's like the only thing that I could see someone getting touchy about, but it's like there. I've seen people do some really good solutions. They just put the hair in braids, like they or they do just like wefts of hair where it's like just like spikes. I've seen like yeah. ways to get around it, and that's fine. Um, if you're super uncomfortable about it, like just find a way to kind of reimagine it so it like fits your appearance a little bit more. Um, but it it also says something that like if you can show like all these creators that like white people like these black characters that's also awesome but you just the only thing is you have to remember that you're still representing a character that's outside of your race and you're gonna end up having to talk to somebody about it so you want to be as respectful as possible is like the key thing when it comes down to it i I really like that sentiment i think that's a very wise thing to keep in mind um that's cool thank you guys for answering um The question was from Shadow and Flame Cosplay. So thank you for sending oh, okay. that in. Um, oh, we didn't come to the crossplay part, did we? <laughs> yes, yes. He did ask about crossplay as well. Like, uh, not not necessarily just crossplay, um, but playing. So uh, I've actually uh, spoken, uh, well, not spoken, but uh, messaged back and forth with this cosplayer uh, oh, okay. for a bit. And so he's actually also wondering, like, if there was a female character that he really, really liked and he wanted to do a male version, would mm. people be put off by that or offended? And my my personal answer to that was, heck no. Like, one no. of my favorite yeah. cosplays of um, Sergeant Calhoun from Wreck-It Ralph is actually done by Core Geek Cosplay. He did a male version of... Uh, Calhoun and uh, his wife did uh, Fix It Felicia, uh, no. <laughs> and it was super super cute. That's adorable. So, uh, but do you do you guys have any uh, like things to say about that as well? Whether they're doing uh, you know cross uh, cross play or a uh, different gender of a character. The thing about that is, there's always going to be someone who's going to be salty about it, so you might mm-hmm. as well just do it. Yeah, That's true. <laughs> it's yeah. like no matter like- what. As long as you're being respectful, you know, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you're just, it's, that's the nice thing about cosplay is you can kind of take your own interpretation of something and there's nothing wrong with doing that. Cool. Yeah. Is there anything you wanted to do before we go into scary stories? Um, I don't know. What's been your favorite cosplay you've ever made? It's actually funny because since I crossplay so much, you'd think it would be a guy character. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually the costume that I spent the year working on that I wore last year, which was my Anthe cosplay. Oh! <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, how about you, uh, Betty? Yeah, you think mine would be a male character too, because I do a bunch of those. But um, I think one of my favorites has been Riju, just because I spent so much time in it. But also because even though she's got, like, a giant headdress and a giant wig and, like, an outfit that I'm sometimes uncomfortable with because it shows my stomach, like, she's so much fun to wear. And I, like, 
it's actually really secure, so I like will dance about and stuff, and then I'll forget I have a giant wig and a giant crown and nearly impale <laughs> people and feel really bad. But um, I also played like a game of Jenga in it, and that was like the test. Oh I was my like, god, okay. sounds amazing! Right. <laughs> I love costumes you can move in. Yeah, yeah, it's the best. <laughs> Oh, that is awesome. Um, so we like to end our show with uh, favorite cosplay stories. So this can be like a horror story or something uplifting or inspiring or uh, just whatever fun story you guys want to share. All right. You guys be thinking while I'm reading this story. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So this was sent in by Lucina. Um, they said, okay, Panon and Mercedes, I need to get this off my chest. This is the same submitter as the Nomad of Nowhere cosplay. This time it was Lucina, a significantly more ambitious costume that I still haven't finished but learned a lot on when I made the character's garments, what she needed to be recognizable. I took it slow, used my dress form and lots of reference, invested in suitable fabric. I really didn't feel like I could use sheets from Goodwill for this one. <laughs> and after two weeks of sewing, ended up with a dress tunic that fit me, was comfortable to move in, had pockets, and best of all, looked like Lucina. Next up was the cape. This went together much quicker, and I instantly discovered the joy of throwing on such a simple item and having the length of it trail behind you. Now, the thing with Lucina's cape, and what most people actually don't know, is that it has a cowl that she can raise over her head. It looks like an infinity scarf all the way around most of the time, but she can also have a hood if she wants to. She doesn't do this in-game, however. The most I've seen it up has been in a couple of really cute pieces of fan art. Credit goes to <laughs> Turfing Plus on Tumblr, however, for giving important cape notes that, unfortunately, I did not follow, as I instead way overshot the cowl measurements. <laughs> my cape had a cumbersome hood that almost dropped down over my eyes. Whoa. It was oversized and overdramatic and made me look very much not like Lucina, as she is typically recognized. However, I wore it up for most of the convention, as I was not particularly confident in the hairpiece I had stacked from cheap Amazon wigs. This still made for some cool selfies, and I had fun walking around with my dramatic cape swoosh, but then I was up first alone to go on stage in my first proper cosplay contest. Oh, it's no, time no. <laughs> time for me to explain some logic. I didn't have any prop to pose with but my cape. I had nervously practiced a monologue the night before, not knowing the exact parameters, but as it was an informal cosplay contest, the judges instead asked contestants to only be up for a short time. So in the green room, I mentally rehearsed some snazzy Lucina thing that I could say, butchering catchphrases from multiple Fire Emblem characters until I settled on a course of action. Aww. I would walk on stage with my Aww. cowl raised mysteriously, take the microphone, say I cannot lose because I fight for my friends, as I dramatically swung my cape and lowered my hood at the exact coolest moment possible. <laughs> this was obviously something oh, no. I should have been rehearsing physically and not just mentally. <laughs> Here's what happened. Um, my mind has blotted out that moment into a struggle in the dark, but I know that for an instant my head was stuck in my hood and it took me a single, not a single swift motion, but a struggle to get myself free. Oh, no. I said oh, my no. piece. It didn't matter. Everyone was laughing at me. The one oh, saving no. grace was that the announcer took himself down with me by remarking, that's about as graceful as I am in Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> I am still oh no. oh genuinely ashamed of this embarrassing moment. Sometimes I'm able to find it funny, and sometimes I'm not. Either way, I have learned to take cosplay less seriously than the first convention where I was stressing out about trying to make myself look cool like Lucina instead of just have a fun in a costume. <laughs> My cosplay still isn't done, but I've improved on it considerably since then. Yay. I brushed out my wig more to get rid of that horrible plastic shine, I got a sparkly headband, and I seriously reconsidered all of my life decisions regarding that cowl. <laughs> what, I, <laughs> what I ultimately did was partially disassemble it, because I had gotten the hood lining color wrong anyway, and then I took a chance to resize the hood appropriately. And now it looks more like it does in the game, so I also added gold trim to the cape and cowl, and that way it is special now because it is mine. The hood now slides down if I try to wear it up, but thankfully now have the confidence to no longer need to do that. <laughs> I don't quite have the confidence to ever go up on stage alone again, but I can't really regret what happened. It was a learning experience about having fun at my first convention and not stressing out too much over how I would do in a contest. And I have never had any shame about wearing a costume that wasn't finished. It just means that on the day I have Falchion to pose with, I can look back at my old convention pictures and see how the costume has grown with me. Until then, I'd like to advise everyone to remember, brush your wig, practice your poses, and appreciate those times <laughs> when self-deprecation is weirdly supportive. You cannot lose, not only because you fight for your friends, but because there's no losers in cosplay contests. Aww. Aww. That's really cute. <laughs> Thanks so much oh for sharing God. that story. 
That's so cute. Oh that my gosh. Cute thing ever. Oh my god. Oh. All right. Oh. Uh, Kamui, did you have one you wanted to share? So, at Otakon Vegas in January of 2018, I was doing my performance as Shuzo from season two of Show by Rock. Oh. And the last line of my audio didn't play. Oh, no. No. So I like panicked for half a second and then I just shouted the line. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I was going to be like, what did you do? <laughs> and and it, was, it was, it was still good. I had like a standy of shoes over from season one and I smashed it with my guitar and they were like, that was great. And oh I was God. like, my audio didn't play. And they were like, oh, it didn't? I thought that was just oh, part no. of the skit, and I was like, "Great, let's let's keep thinking that." Yeah, you're nice. like, "Yeah, that was totally on good, purpose." Good. Yeah, plan <laughs> that. That's awesome. How about you, Black Betty? Um, hmm. Still don't have a super good one. Um, I guess I have more of a cautionary tale. I guess that's the yeah. best one I got. <laughs> um, hey, those are always good. <laughs> it's it's why I try really hard not to con crunch anymore. Um. <laughs> I was I had a photo shoot. It was early in the morning and um it was in Seattle. I live in Portland. Um and I had just finished up my wig. It was for Kingdom Hearts and um so I was like hitting the road at 4 a.m. to Oof. go to Seattle. And Oof. um I was driving. I had like energy drinks to keep me going and <gasps> like maybe an hour into the drive i was just like i am so tired like oh, i'm no. i'm so tired and i took one energy drink uh that didn't work i started to take another one and then i was like that's it i gotta get off i gotta go get off the road i gotta get off the road and maybe take a nap or something so i like ended up parking in a parking space in front of a mcdonald's oh, and no. taking a little quick nap um and uh it all was well until uh those energy drinks kicked in and it was like someone hit me with adrenaline and I was just like, I like burst, like sat up. I was alive. Oh man. And I was just like was vibrating. Alive. And, um, but I, I did not make it in time for the photo shoot. There was like literally no way. Um, but uh, I, I got to Seattle. I did. I was so awake. Got um, there and safe that, and awake. <laughs> I did. I got there safe and awake. And the best part was I had signed up to give blood, um, <laughs> in cosplay. And I, um, I got there. I was like really cute. I looked adorable. I was um, Ventus, and I, I went there and I was like, "I'm ready to give blood." And like the person took my blood pressure and was like, "No." <laughs> it was like, "No, you will faint. Go, go lie down." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> um, and then I got to cosplay, and it was wonderful. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never doing that again. Oh man! I just oh. Oh, I said it's. I thought I was gonna go give blood in cosplay. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Really bad choice. Oh. Oh. Bless you for trying. Oh. Get sleep. <laughs> Rest well oh. before going to your convention. I know sleep is super important. <laughs> Yes, oh, man. and if you're giving blood, don't drink a bunch of <laughs> No, they drink. will definitely turn you away. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, for oh. our listeners, one more time, would you guys mind sharing your social media, uh, Prince mm -hmm. Kamui? Um, my Facebook and Twitter is Prince Kamui Cosplay. Uh, my singing is on YouTube under Super Kamui Cosplay. Not Cosplay, just Super Kamui. I like <laughs> Awesome. Uh, and Black Betty cosplay? Um, on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, it's Black Betty cosplay with an S on Instagram only. And on um, Twitter, it's the Betty underscore cosplay. Awesome. Yay. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for being on our show today. Yeah, no um, problem. We just have a few announcements as we're wrapping up. Um, anything you want to add, Mercedes? No, this was super fun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as always, thank you to Macy Roberts for our music. And David, tell us about what's coming up on your podcast. Uh, as, as we were recording, I was even reading. I noticed. The, the next section uh, that we are going to be covering, it is called um, War of the Realms by Jason Aaron from the Marvel Comics. He's been working up to this for the past four years. Ooh. Um, Thor loses his hammer and an arm. Jane <gasps> Foster holds the hammer. And a lot of big stuff happens. So I'm really excited about it. So that's what we're going to be reading this uh, the month in March. 
That sounds boss. That sounds really cool. Um, yeah. yeah. So if you guys have a story you want to share with us, remember you can email us at cosplaystitchandseam at gmail.com. Or go to the website, cosplaystitchandseam.com, and you can fill out the form there. Or uh, we've got a Facebook group. And a Facebook and group, if yes. you want to support us, uh, it's Cosplay Stitch on Coffee. Um, we are 100% donation supported, so if you guys want to help us out, that just a coffee is always a great way to do that. Yes. Um, until next time, remember to be the positivity that you want to see in your community. Thanks so much. We love you guys. Have a good day. Don't con crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.